One of the really powerful features that XSI has are its deformers and the way that it handles them. So I just like to go through this uh, deformer list and really explain uh, what, how they work and which does which and uh, how to use them. So uh, let's just start off at the top and let's uh, just go to our curve deformer. So basically what I'm just going to do is uh, grab a uh, cylinder maybe and uh, let's give it some uh, height. There we go. And basically I'm just going to draw a curve now. So uh, let's just zoom out here a little bit and draw a little curve. Maybe something like this. Okay, that's pretty good. So basically we just select our object, say deform by curve, and then it will now apply that curve to the object. So we have a lot of sliders in here. First of all, of course, which axis we're deforming along. Y is good in this case, or X would be sideways, or Z would be sideways the other way. But we want Y, we want it along the thing. So then we can uh, scale it along the curve or translate along the curve. So for example, move it, move it up here. If this is not enough, you can just simply go in here and add more, or you can just type in a new value. There we go. Something like that, fine. So let's just scale it along the curve so we have a little bit more. If we don't have enough UVs, we could always add UVs to the uh, object itself anyway. Uh, let's just go in here. Not enough, quite enough geometry. Add a little bit more for a little bit more accuracy. And just go back. Maybe that's a little bit too much scaling. And if you need more geometry, just add more in. We can uh, scale also in, in depth and uh, in both directions. So if we look at it uh, this way, you can see that we can scale sideways or height ways, so along all three axes along the object. And also, of course, we can uh, translate it to be outside the curve or inside the curve or whatever, as well as along the curve. And we can roll the object around its own axis along the curve. So again, this, you can see this is quite useful. We can also constrain to the deformer, to the deformee, depending on, uh, so that when you move one, the other moves with it. Um, but you can see this, this could be very, very powerful. Uh, and again, for animation, everything, again, is animatable. So uh, if you want to animate something like this, it's, it's a very useful thing. I mean, all our deformers can be used either as animation tools or modeling tools. Uh, and it's well worth keeping that in mind when you're working. OK, so let's have a look at the next one. And that would be the cage deform. Now, cage deform is uh, quite a powerful deformer. Uh, its main use is very similar to a um, Sorry, it's very similar to an actual a lattice, except that the um, the big difference being that it actually it can be any geometric shape as opposed to just sort of a lattice cube thing. Um, so what you can do, let's just grab a uh, sort of torus on the outside and just increase the cross section here a little bit. Okay, we'll just go into wireframe so we uh, actually see both of them. There we go. So what we have now is we have this torus on the inside, which is a sort of a high res mesh. Now we can maybe increase it a little bit more. Why not? Okay, so we have this high res mesh on the inside, and on the outside we have a low res mesh. And what we're going to do is we're going to deform the high res mesh on the inside by the low res mesh on the outside. So we'll just do by cage, select the outside object, and say okay. So now we have here strength and fall off and all that sort of thing. But basically, the essence is if I go in here and I pull this inside object, let's uh, or sorry, this outside object, the inside object will get pulled along. There we go. So, and you can see it's actually a very, very fast uh, deformer, um, even though it's, you know, deforming a lot of geometry. And what this allows you to do is actually do things like uh, apply your envelope to a, uh, a fairly low-res rig and then have the, that low-res rig drive the high-res rig or use it to uh, control elbow bending and all that sort of thing, because you have a lot more control then. We do have a lot of strength. You can see here the strength and the fall-off and uh, that sort of thing, allowing for a lot of control of the actual geometry inside there as well. Okay, so uh, that's fairly clear, I think. By spine is another really useful one. Uh, let's just grab our uh, grid here, and uh, let's just increase this to a big size. We want a big sort of sort of thing here. Whoops, come on, there we go. Actually, let's make it even bigger than that. Let's give it some more resolution. So um, basically what Deform by Spine does is it allows you to um, draw a curve, or pretty much anything there, and we'll just, uh, we'll just draw a curve like this. And that sort of defines the spine that's going to be used for the actual deformation. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll just uh, go on here and hit Deform by Spine and select that the curves that I want to use. There we go. And right click. And now you see I get this uh, little property page that opens up. And what it's telling me is exactly which points are going to be affected as of this. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, maybe change the fall off a little bit to create a sort of a, an interesting curve type shape. 
something like this. Okay, so that's the amplitude. And then we have the radius here, which we can change to either create more or less. And we can also change the uh, longit longitudinal radius fall off like that if we wanted to, or the profile of the radius curve. But let's just leave it. And then what I can do is I can change this curve. And what you'll see is in three-dimensional space, if I just lift up this curve straight up, it's going to pull the hill up with it. And you can see that what I'm getting in here is this is my actual fall-off curve, the, the radius profile that I'm actually drawing, which then uh, sort of controls what this is going to look like here. And you can see that's pretty cool. Okay, and we have then the fall-off right here. That's really controlling what this whole thing here will look like. So let's uh, grab this guy here. I don't know, we could unlock these or we can zoom out. I see I have my profile right there. Maybe something like that. And you can see we can create whatever profile here we want to, both in amplitude and in radius. So it's a great uh, tool, again, for uh, creating. And because it's it's really on, this, on the, uh, the uh, surface, I can do whatever I want with the surface and with the curve, and uh, it, it'll, it'll propagate along with it. OK. So all right, let's just uh, grab our grids back here. Now let's uh, have a look at the next one. Okay, deformed by surface. Um, again, very, very useful under certain circumstances. Let's just grab a uh, sphere and a grid and uh, just show you how these work. It is deformed by surface, so we'll just basically what it does is it takes an object and wraps it around or, or projects it onto another object. So we'll just take this and deform it onto the surface and uh, you do need, uh, uh, it needs to be a NURB surface that you're projecting onto. Uh, so just that's the one limitation. So basically let's push it out in Y a little bit. And what you can see is that my grid has been wrapped around this sphere and I can change the scaling a little bit to unwrap it just sort of like that. Okay. And uh, there. And I can move it around, translate it around, and I can really make it go anywhere on the surface. So again, it can be really useful for attaching, uh, you know, objects to a surface or uh, you know, holding them in place or making them wander across a grid or something like that. Again, very, very useful in certain and for an as animation tool also. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next. The next one would be uh, deformed by volume, and for that I think I'll grab another head or uh, a character or something like that. Okay, so basically what deformed by volume is, is it gives us a little widget that allows us to uh, basically pull using sort of a volume uh, deformation thing here. So let's just uh, grab some polygons here. Whoops, there we are. Grab the character first. And let's just frame in here. Okay. So the actual tool itself, um, basically I can just select an area or have the whole guy here. And either, again, very similar to the lattice, either I can have it selected and just go up here to control all object volume deform, or I can already have one and then connect it. Now what it does is it gives me a little property page here with fall off and all the sort of things we've come to expect from a deformer, but it also gives me this widget here that I can sort of move around, for example, to bend it across like this, or if I wanted to undo that, I can also disconnect this widget using Shift V, move it around, maybe up to this person's head up at the top, connect again using Shift V, and then pull, and then maybe sort of have it a little bit over here, disconnect it, maybe move it to this side, connect it using Shift V, and then pull the other direction. So we've now created sort of an alien. There we go. Lovely. Beautiful, I say. So again, you can always go back. And the, the advantage of this is that you have your um, actual proportional volume operations in here. So you can always go back to your fall off and adjust it uh, in arrears. So, you know, make it a little bit sharper there on the corners if you wanted to. And you'll be able to see immediately what you've just adjusted, even though it's uh, because of the relational modeling. Okay, so that's pretty much the uh, first set of deformers, and uh, so next we'll go into the second.